Hi everyone, welcome back to Plant Boy. First of all, thank you for sticking around while I took a little break at the end of last week, and we are just going to jump right back into the video production every uh, Thursday and Monday. So today we're going to be talking about the snake plant Jaboa. This is a really interesting cultivar that has been created over the years that has very broad foliage and actually gets very, very tall in comparisons to other snake plants. And they also kind of grow in these clusters, which I found interesting and come kind of outright, um, whereas other snake plants um, tend to grow kind of more vertically and kind of stay in a cluster that way and don't really fan out as much, just from my experience. So let's get right into how to care for this plant. Like all snake plants, this plant can tolerate lower light conditions. It's not going to thrive in low light by any means. If you can, you definitely want to give your snake plant bright and direct light. And if possible, you can give snake plants bright direct light, quite a bit of it actually, and that will actually help the plant flower. You will only ever really see a snake plant flower if it is in bright direct light. So snake plants are very, very versatile in how much light they can tolerate. Next, let's talk about water and how the substrate that you have your snake plant in plays into watering your plant. You wanna make sure that you have your snake plants in a very well-draining soil mixture, something that's very chunky, that has a lot of orchid bark or perlite or sand or rock or something like that to really help all of the water flow through that pot relatively quickly. These plants don't like sitting in water for long periods of time. And in between waterings, you wanna make sure that you let your soil dry out completely in between watering. So I have some snake plants that I actually just, whenever they start to get a little dry, I just lift them out of the pot and I look at the bottom of the root ball and see if there's any moisture left there at all. If there is, I hold off on watering for another few days. Snake plants do come from an arid area. I believe the majority of them are native to like South Africa and the Africa continent. So you wanna make sure that you do not have these plants in very high humidity scenarios. They can tolerate higher humidity, but if you were to put this plant in a terrarium, for example, where you have a lot of tropical, humid loving plants, it's not going to do well due to it being used to native, natively arid climates. That being said, you can keep your home really at any humidity just don't have any kind of humidity vessel very close to your snake plant these guys ideally would prefer somewhere between 30 to uh, upwards of 50 percent humidity they are pretty flexible with temperature as well from my experience you can let these guys dip below 60 degrees fahrenheit um, I've had my snake plant out on the porch before where it's gotten to around 45 degrees in the morning and then heated up throughout the day and it didn't really seem to mind it. So as long as you're not letting this plant get too, too cold below uh, 50 degrees, I would say ideally, and you're also not letting this plant get super, super hot above like 90 degrees, you should be just fine. Another thing about potting your snake plant is that you wanna make sure you do not have it in too large of a pot or planting vessel. So obviously if you have a very large pot in a small plant, it's going to take the soil much longer to dry out in between waterings. Therefore, snake plants prefer to be planted in a smaller vessel, not only because the watering or the water source can be used quicker and leached out of the soil, but also because these plants do seem to tend to reproduce more frequently whenever they are in a smaller pot. This guy I think is over potted. I don't think that it needed this large of a pot, but I'm just going to let it play out. I just bought it recently. I don't want to shock it or anything like that. So I'm going to give it some time to acclimate and I will go from there. If you notice that your snake plant is root bound, don't be alarmed. I've seen plenty of snake plants that are kind of busting out of their pots. 
Um, they don't seem to mind it very much. However, if there is literally no room for the plant left to grow, then you do want to reconsider and actually uh, consider potting or repotting the plant into a slightly larger pot. And just like an all-purpose fertilizer is fine for snake plants throughout the growing season, that being um, spring through summer months, wherever you're at, a 10-10-10 or 20-20-20 all-purpose fertilizer would do just fine. Or you can use something that is like a fish emulsion or a liquid kelp or something like that if you prefer a natural option. The last thing I wanna mention about snake plants is that they are toxic. They uh, will do some damage to any kind of kids or pets that may get into this plant or eat any of it. So if you have any small kids or pets that tend to get into house plants, you may want to reconsider purchasing this plant. Um, yes. That's all you really need to know about the Jabewa. I think it's a very interesting cultivar. Um, I really love these snake plants that have these really broad foliage. It kind of reminds me of like a whale fin Sansevieria. I guess they're not called Sansevieria anymore. A whale fin snake plant. Um, but I just think it's so cool. I feel like I was relatively lucky to find one in my area. But I hope that you find this guide helpful. Sansevieria snake plant is a really great house plant, super versatile, and you can't really mess it up as long as you're giving it a decent amount of light and not overwatering it as well. Overwatering is the key thing with this plant. You definitely want to make sure your soil is totally, totally dry before you give this another good soak. Let me know if you have any interesting snake plant cultivars that you have in your home in the comments below, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.